This is it, a can't miss game, and a backdrop to match the special occasion. The fans had this one circled on their calendars long ago, and now it's a matter of who will dominate on the pitch. Big characters on the big stage, what a prospect. Keep it right here for live coverage on EA TV. A warm welcome to the South London stronghold that is Selhurst Park. I'm Guy Mowbray, and the former England forward Sue Smith is with me for commentary. And we've got action from the Premier League here today. It's Crystal Palace, and they take on Liverpool. Cheers, Guy. I think it's so important that both teams start on the front foot, take the game to the opposition, and an early goal would certainly settle any nerves. This is the Crystal Palace lineup. Yeah, it looks like a 5 2 3 system. I'm sure they'll be quite fluid, but when they need to defend at times, there'll be eight players behind the ball. In attack, it's important that wing backs and maybe another midfielder get forward to support. This is the Liverpool starting lineup. Allison is in goal. Trent Alexander Arnold starts with Andy Robertson in the fullback positions. Luis Diaz plays with Mohamed Salah in the wide positions. And the main striker is Diogo Jota. And so the first half kicks off. Virgil van Dijk. And that will do it for the first half here at Crystal Palace. Mohamed Salah has drifted around the game a little bit today. It's not been his most accomplished performance. Yeah, he needs to do more for me. He's been a bit off it. I think his movement can be better too. But I also think his teammates can find him quicker. He's certainly the key to them winning this game. Good work to regain possession. Delivered into the box. Well, he scored, but it's not going to count. He finished it off nicely, didn't he? But he was comfortably offside. Allowing space, and he's finding it. Salah. chance yet to appear and the keeper's done really well to keep that out Liverpool come away with it he wasn't given anywhere else to go here's Jota promising move this a goal now would surely be the winner Salah Salah oh and a good save to keep it low Diogo Jota, played through nicely, and I'm sure he thought he'd scored there. Great goalkeeping. And what a chance this could be to potentially win the game from this corner. about that wrong a poor example of how to head the ball
Cech Dukore. It's all over as the ref blows for full time. What an intriguing prospect. A game of high profile featuring two magnificent sides fully prepared for this massive occasion and fully prepared to make this the big showcase. Stay tuned, we'll have all the action for you live from London here on EA TV. And good evening to you from this beautifully appointed stadium, the home of Arsenal here in North London. I'm Derek Ray, your match commentator, and alongside providing all the tactical analysis is Stuart Robson. And it's all about action from the Premier League in this case. It's Arsenal versus Southampton. Well, as always, I'm looking forward to this because both teams have strong aspects to their game. Both managers like to play attacking football, and we've got some good matchups all over the pitch. And so the starting 11 for Arsenal. Gabriel plays alongside William Saliba in central defence. Declan Rice starts alongside Martin Odegaard in central midfield. And in this tactical setup, they have just the one player in attack. And here's how the lineup looks for Southampton. Well, it's a defensive looking lineup, but if the wing backs break forward, the midfield can get close to the front pair and the front two can link up with each other they should still cause problems today. And so the battle commences. Fort here. Downs. A delicious piece of skill. Can they forge ahead? They do! And you've got to say they're good value for the lead. Well, here's the replay. Watch how he goes past his man with such ease. And it's just a change of pace. And it makes the striker's job so easy. All he has to do is make the right connection. It's a lovely goal. Are back underway. And 1-0 it is. Let's see what happens next. Smallbone. Plenty of running room in the wide position. It's opening up for them. Real chance. And a fine stop to turn the ball away. One minute of time added on for stoppages. Martin Odegaard. So half time. That will close the book on the first half here at the Emirates. Well, he hasn't quite had the impact and attack that we were expecting, Stuart. Yeah, he's just not found his form today. He doesn't look quite right. Unless he can impose himself on this game and start threatening the keeper, they're going to lose this one. So into the second half, and Arsenal with a bit of work ahead of them. Rice with it. Arsenal move it forward with purpose and control. Martinelli. 
And now Havertz. Can he put it in? And the goalkeeper has outdone himself with that save. Substitution for Southampton. Coming up Substitution the time it is here. Jack Stevens to be replaced by number 21, Charlie Taylor. Well, opting for the short corner. Now, who can he pick at? Really fine piece of defending play to break us up. Really good wide play. Opportunity. And putting his body on the line. And the referee says penalty. to extend their lead here. And he swaps it home with confidence. Well, here it is again, and just watch the keeper. He stands still, hoping it's hit down the middle. Unfortunately for him, he's got it wrong. So the ball rolling again at 2 0. Ben White. Using his physical strength to make sure he doesn't lose the ball. Can he get one back? He can! And who's to say there's not enough time for them to level matters? It would be quite the story. Well, it's the perfect finish, isn't it? As you can see, you can't place it better than that, can you? And the ball is moving again. Anyone's guess how this is going to finish? 2-1 currently. Downs. And successfully cut out. Time and the scoreline against Arsenal. But still they're in this. Well, the fans want to see a shot. Nicely saved. And a substitution in the offing. to deliver it accurately half-hearted clearance still looking for space get back and let's see what it leads to this could be the equaliser the replay and confirmation that he did get a touch on the ball unfortunately it wasn't enough to prevent the goal and the whistle is sounded and these two teams are locked together Building to a crescendo all week, and very shortly it will be for real. We have all the action for you live.
Hello and welcome, and I can tell you it was a dry walk to the gantry today, no rain in sight. I'm Derek Ray, and with me here on the commentary box is Stuart Robson, and we've got Premier League action coming right up. It's Bradford versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Thanks, Derek, as always. This should be a good game. Great atmosphere inside the stadium. We've got two teams full of quality, some interesting matchups, and two coaches that want to play an attractive brand of football. What more could you ask for? Here's how the lineup looks for Brentford. Well, it's great to see a team playing with wingers in a 4 3 3, but they've got to be effective both with their dribbling and their crosses, otherwise, they'll become bit part players. The initial 11 for Wolves. Well, on paper, it's down as a 4 5 1, but for me, it's more likely to be a split midfield with three supporting the front man and two sitting that little bit deeper as defensive cover. And now they get the ball rolling. Jan Elt in behind for him to chase. Bimo. Now with Jensen. Can he take the chance? And the keeper diving to thwart it. <laughs> Who can they pick out? Well, a bit short with the clearance. It's one corner after another. He's driven in the corner. And he did what he had to do defensively. While we're focusing on this fellow as one to watch, Stewart in particular, what do you expect to see from him? Well, he's one of those players that knows where to be in the box. Oh, goodness me, he set the post. A strong hand on the ball. Well, Wolves were inches away. Jan Elt. Who can he pick out? He succeeds in clearing it. This looks more than decent. To put them ahead. Great opportunity. And that's a very good parry. And Belgarde. And we will have just one additional minute. So the whistle then. We're up the halfway stage in this match. Well, probably a fair assessment of his first half's work would be a mixed bag. Well, I've been disappointed with him in that first half. He just didn't have an impact on the game. Yes, the service into him wasn't great, but his movement needs to be a lot better. Let's hope he improves in the second half. And as the second half commences, both sides can reflect on a first half in which they were so very evenly matched. 
Jean Wigner Bellegarde. Well, they keep working away, looking for passing lanes. Can they forge ahead? They do! And you've got to say, they're good value for the lead. Well, here we can see it again. Look at the way he glides past the defender to create space for himself. And he makes no mistake with the finish. He showed a lot of composure there. And back underway. 1-0 it is. Jean Wigner Bellegarde. With the owner of the blue card Nuri. registration BG04 D. Cunha. Please turn your lights off. And he's through here. Just needed to put it on the target, but it didn't happen for them. Well, in those situations, you expect him to score. He just got it all wrong there. Number 22, Nelson Semedo. He read the situation defensively and did his job. Nuri, trying to open them up. Well, it's great when you can rely on your keeper. The referee's verdict is three additional minutes. Mateus Cunha. As you can see, they finish this really easily. They don't give the keeper a chance, do they? That's a good goal. Well, there goes the final whistle and a good day at the office for Wolves. Three points for them. What did you make of it all? Well, fairly comfortable at the end, wasn't it? But they controlled the middle of the park well. Going forward, that's some really nice, incisive play, too. It's a good result for them. I think it's fair to say he'll be happy with his own contribution in this game, Stuart. Well, I thought his all-round game was excellent. It was his ability to find space that impressed me most. And with a bit more luck, he could have had a second one today. What a game we have in store for you today. The hype has been building all week and we're just moments away from kickoff time. Stay tuned for the live action. Hello from the King Power Stadium on a clear night, ideal playing conditions. My name is Derek Ray and sitting alongside me in the commentary box providing expert analysis is Stuart Robson. I'm very much looking forward to bringing you action from the Premier League. It's Leicester City and they face Bournemouth. Well, this should be interesting today. I like the makeup of both teams. They really do have a good balance of attacking and defensive qualities. But the team that has the greater desire will probably come out on top. And the lineup for Leicester City. Wilfred and Didi starts with Harry Winks in the engine room. And the lead striker today is Jamie Vardy. And the starting 11 for Bournemouth. 
Well, they're playing the same shape, really. So it's all about getting control of that central area and which of the wide players has the greatest effect on the game. And the game begins. Back. Take some progress with the ball at his feet. Opportunity it is. And a goal to give them the lead. They have their reward. Well, as you can see, what an excellent back heel this is to set up the goal. And when he gets onto it, he decides to go for power. It's a really emphatic finish, which gives the keeper no chance. Well, he has to come up with a game plan. His side are struggling now. So the action underway again. And certainly the onus is on Leicester to come up with a reply. Winks. Jamie Vardy now. Isahaku. Some of the fans are screaming, have a go. Oh, that is a terrific save. Well, that's a great save from that sort of range. Really good reflexes. Can someone get on the end of this? And cleared off the line. And really, it had to be further away from the keeper. Options in the middle. Keeping possession of the ball with authority. This could square the game. And that's exactly what has transpired. Now, that could be a massive turning point. And momentum is with them. Here's the goal again, and it's a great ball to put him through. Good vision to set up the chance, and then the finish is fairly simple in the end. That's a good goal. So back underway, following the equaliser. Marcus Tabak. Just looking for the right moment for that final pass. Well, there was impending danger, but good defending. After the foul, a chance to contemplate what is next, and perhaps a goal from this free kick. A really well-taken free kick, but no reward for it. Well, for a moment there, he must have thought that was in. He struck it so cleanly. Vardy. Now with Patau. And quick thinking defensively. And time is up as far as the first half is concerned here at the King Power Stadium. I think most fans would be pretty happy with this man's display so far. Well, they weren't at their best, but with that equaliser, you can see why he's so important to this team. Hopefully they can get more of the ball to him in the second half so he can show us his ability. Well, as they get the ball rolling again, interesting to see how the second half pans out. Fast. And Reed with it. Winks. Vardy. Well, he didn't miss by very much 
Rangers Hall. Christie. High quality defending. Can he finish this? And saved by the keeper. And he stopped them in their tracks. Clivet. Can they forge ahead? They do. And you've got to say they're good value for the lead. Well, just look at this again. The speed of counter-attack is so impressive. And then through on goal, he just goes for power and smashes it past the keeper. There's no stopping that. What a great finish. So the ball is rolling again. 2-1 the scoreline. And the electronic board showing one additional minute. Chance to play it in. And that is the end of the game. The referee blows for full time. And not exactly the result Leicester City fans were hoping for. A defeat for them. Your assessment of the performance. Well, Derek, it was a poor result. But it was a really tight contest. Both sides had their chances. Could have gone either way. But in the end, they will be disappointed. Well, he often cuts the figure of a thinking person's footballer. And Stewart, he's thought his way throughout this match. Well, I have to say, that was impressive. Not just his goals, but his all-round play. He was excellent. What a game we have in store for you today. The hype has been building all week, and we're just moments from kickoff. All the action coming live. Well, hello everyone. We're in Manchester today, the Etihad Stadium. I'm Guy Mowbray, and I'm joined by Sue Smith on the gantry. And we've got live Premier League action for you today. It's Manchester City, and they play Fulham. Yeah, cheers, guys. Great to be here. I think it's important that both teams are focused from the off, though, and they start quickly. But I'd love to see some goals. Hopefully, I've not just cursed it. This is the Manchester City starting 11. Edison is between the posts. Manuel Akanji starts alongside Ruben Diaz in central defence. Bernardo Silva plays alongside Matteo Kovacic in central midfield. And the main man in attack is Erling Haaland. Here's the Fulham team sheet. Well, it looks like a 4-2-3-1 when they're in possession. May go to a 4-5-1 when defending. You think the double pivot in midfield, they're key to protect the back line, but they also need to get forward to support the press. There's going to be plenty of threat from the wide midfielders too, I'm sure. Off we go, the match is underway. City trying to get things moving. Silva! Will it open up for him? Well, he's kicked that out nicely. And it's a short corner. Keepers 
done really well to keep that out. Well, listen to that roar when they win the ball back. The fans are responding to the positive play. They just need to finish one of these chances now. Harlan, there it is. That's the breakthrough and fully deserved, you have to say. this again it's a tidy finish and it's certainly been coming the pressure's been building and they've got their rewards so it's 1-0 as the ball gets rolling again real opportunity and that is magnificent defending Calvin Bassi. And that brings to an end the first half here at the Etihad. Well, we expected it, and we've seen it. A strong performance from Erling Haaland so far. Yeah, he's had a good first half, hasn't he? He's looked lively, he's created plenty of chances, and he's been rewarded for his industry with the key goal. Hopefully it's more of the same in the second half. So the second half kicks off. This could be threatening. De Bruyne, Haaland. Oh, seeking his second goal, but the keeper stops it. He's certainly been bright, getting himself into good positions on a regular basis, but this time the keeper's equal to him. Number 16, Rodri. The ball comes in. That's a brilliant block. Can he finish? Oh, super save. They're not beaten just yet. No, they're not. They're still in it. And that's thanks to the goalkeeper. What a brilliant stop from him. But time is ticking. They need that one other chance. To the box it goes well any chance has gone for now oh lovely skill to beat his marker Harlan and a magnificent save hope still alive yeah that's a great save guy but time certainly isn't on their side they'll be hoping that they can create another chance before the end They opt to go short with the corner. And a goal here, and you have to think that would be the game. Not one left at all now. Well, for good measure, we can see it again, but it's clearly not over the line. There can be no debate on that one. It's been delivered. It's only halfway clear. Quite right, it's a throw in now. Bassi. Well, there's the final whistle, and it's Manchester City who take the three points. It was a real hard-fought game. Both teams showed moments of quality. They worked hard, but overall, they'll be happy with the result and the performance. Well, Erling Haaland is a handful and then some for any defender. What are your thoughts on his performance today, Sue? Yeah, I thought he was a constant threat. His movement was good and created a lot of chances. Just needed to be a bit more composed in front of goal. But he did get one, and the team won, so I'm sure he's smiling. Two great sides going head-to-head -head in what's sure to be an exciting fixture. Join us for all the action coming up next. Hello to you from the London Stadium, the venue for the 2012 Olympic Games. 
My name's Guy Mowbray. I'm joined by Sue Smith in the commentary position. And we've got live Premier League action for you today. It's West Ham United and they take on Ipswich Town. Well, thanks as always, Guy. It's a real pleasure to be here. It's been buzzing ahead of kickoff. Let's hope the football lives up to the atmosphere. This is the West Ham United team sheet. Alphonse Ariola stands between the posts. Guido Rodriguez plays alongside Thomas Suchek in the centre of midfield, and they go with just one in attack. This is the visitors team for today. Well, it's very similar, isn't it? It's so important that the number nine isn't left isolated. Both teams are gonna have to make sure that they get players in and around them when they get forward. First kick of the ball, and we're away. Have to have a look at here. What should we expect today, Sue? Well, he's just such an intelligent footballer. The little give and goes, the quick movements, his ability to con... Pack it off! Oh, it's in! An early opener to get the game going. this again you can see he's under all sorts of pressure but still manages to keep his cool and he finishes it off well so off we go at 1-0 Could be, and the keeper's done really well to keep that out. He's in here. Off the crossbar. And they're not going to bet. They're getting into a good position. Oh, really good goalkeeping there. Not really going anywhere fast with it. And the first 45 minutes have come and gone at the London Stadium. Well, he's certainly been influential in the first 45 minutes. What have you made of his performance, Sue? Yeah, he's had a really productive first half. He'd give his side the lead with a tidy finish, but... It's his all-round play that's been so good too. Hopefully we'll see more of that in the second half. Off we go, the second half underway. him to probably stop that and the forward progress continues great chance here well oh, he's kept that out nicely
And the ball comes in. And away it goes. Making good progress here. Could be a chance. Oh, superb save. He's done so well to keep that out. Mohamed Kudus. Well, it was looking good, but ultimately nothing doing. And that brings an end to the match. With disappointment felt in the away end, it's three points dropped. Yeah, certainly not the best performance, was it? Just a little off the pace for me. Obviously a disappointing result, but the key thing is that they bounce back now as they can't afford the repeat next time out. We know what a good player he is, and he's really showed it today. What's your verdict, Sue? Yeah, he played well. Real vital goal, too. They just struggled to cope with his quality today. The fans have been waiting impatiently for. Now it's almost here, and both teams know they have better be ready as soon as the referee's whistle sounds. A fabulous prospect. It's Everton, they take on Newcastle United, live on EA TV. Hello and welcome to a stadium that has a wonderfully old-fashioned feel to it, Goodison Park. I'm Derek Ray, and keeping me company here on the commentary gantry is Stuart Robson. And it's all about action from the Premier League in this case. It's Everton up against Newcastle United. Well, they've got everything needed for a good game here. Two motivated teams, a vibrant atmosphere and some very good players. Let's hope we're not disappointed. Number six, James Tukowski. Number five, Michael Keane. Number 27, Adrissa Gay. Number 11, Jack Harrison. Number seven, Dwight McNeil. Number 16, Abdelay Decore. And number nine, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And here's the team for Everton. Jordan Pickford is the keeper. James Tarkovsky plays with Michael Keane in central defence. And leading the attack today is Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And here's the Newcastle formation. Well, they're going to play with two wingers in this 4-3-3 formation. So they need to switch the ball quickly and get crosses into the box but they also need to get at least two midfield players making runs into the penalty area. That's a must. And now they get the ball rolling. Anthony Gordon. And the Magpies moving the ball forward with purpose. A big moment because the referee has pointed to the spot. Penalty coming up. Can he make it 1-0? Well, here it is again, great composure to send the keeper the wrong way before striking it into the opposite side. That's an excellent penalty. Well, just look at his reaction. That could prove to be a massive goal for his team. Well, back underway, and 1-0 it is. 
Let's see what happens next. A little bit quicker. I think they'll get back into this. And it might be. Chance here. Oh, that is an outrageously good stop. Well, great reflex from the keeper. He did brilliantly there. And taken short. Fabian Cher. Determined defending. In the opinion of the referee, that is a penalty. To make it 2-0. And the keeper denies them from the spot. Well, time is up as far as the first half is concerned here on Merseyside. This man will get most of the plaudits for his contribution up to this point, Stuart. Well, I thought he had a really effective first half. Not only did he get the goal that gave them the lead, but his general play was really good. He was a constant threat, and I'm sure we'll see more of him in the second half. So into the second half, underway once more. Newcastle with the advantage, but certainly no room from danger. Long stuff. Five minutes remaining, and one thing is certain, no one is leaving because it's still close. And it goes to increase their advantage. And will that be the goal that ends up securing it for them? This is a very tidy finish, as you can see. He's under so much pressure, but his strength just allows him to hit through the ball cleanly. It's an excellent goal. So back underway with the lead standing at 2-0. And three minutes of stoppage time to be added on. Well, here we can see it again. It's a lovely ball in behind, perfectly timed, and then through on goal, he just goes for power and smashes it past the keeper. There's no stopping that. What a great finish. Is this going to be a thrashing? 3-0 now. Tarkovsky. So there goes the final whistle, and this hasn't gone at all to plan for Everton. What did you make of it? Oh, dear Jerry, that was a worrying display. They were completely outplayed in almost every department. The coach has got a lot of work to do before the next game. Well, he often cuts the figure of a thinking person's footballer, and Stuart, he's thought his way throughout this match. Well, certainly a solid performance and a very good goal. But he'd be slightly annoyed he missed the penalty. It was a great result overall, though. We all relish as football fans. Non-stop hype all week long. And now for the action. Hello to you, wherever you happen to be. Our action comes to you today from Villa Park. I'm your match commentator, Derek Ray, at the microphone. And sitting alongside me is the former Arsenal, West Ham and Coventry midfield player, Stuart Robson. And looking forward to bringing you action from the Premier League coming right up. It's Aston Villa taking on Manchester United. Thanks, Derek, as always. This should be a good game. Great atmosphere inside the stadium. We've got two teams full of quality, some interesting matchups, and two coaches that want to play an attractive brand of football. What more could you ask for?
Here's how the lineup looks for Aston Villa. Bao Torres starts alongside Ezri Konza in central defence. John McGinn plays with Leon Bailey in the wide areas. And leading the line today is Ollie Watkins. And here's the lineup for Manchester United. Andre Onana is the goalkeeper. Matthijs de Ligt plays alongside Lisandro Martinez in central defence. And rather than use a strike partnership, they've gone with just the one player in attack. And the game begins. Zirkze. Good technique displayed. It's looking promising and effectively parried away by the keeper. Well, United can't believe Rogers. Oh, no, no. Nice weight on the pass. Just needs to stay calm. Oh, the crossbar is still reverberating. Well, there we have it. That's going to be all for the first half here in the Midlands. So back underway and an intriguing second half in prospect. Ahead. Super challenge. Rashford. Is it going to be? And pushed away to safety. Bruno Fernandes has it. Good looking move. Surely. And Manchester United might be able to profit here. Corner it is. Well, they've decided to make a change. So the corner played into the box. And it's in! 1-0! They've breached the defence! Well, here you can see it again. It's a superb cross, just asking for someone to go and meet it. And then what a great finish as well. Good connection with the ball, leaving the keeper with little chance. It's a great goal. Well, it's a big moment for Eric Ten Hag. He now just needs to get his team refocused and concentrate on the game. 1-0 then. Number four, Matthias De Ligt. More than decent this from United. Opportunity! And that, a piece of goalkeeping you're going to see again and again and again. And United will switch things around personnel-wise. Who can they pick out? Oh, disappointing clearance. Zirkze. Timely intervention from the kick. It'll be following the reflection. It is now a substitution. And he's fired over the corner. Well, it's the late show. And they are level again.
underway again here on the back of that leveller. He has teammates around him. That's a good pass. Oh, that's a solid piece of defending when it looked as though it might go wrong for them. And that's great work to keep it in play. And the whistle is sounded, and these two teams are locked together. The atmosphere is building as two sides worthy of the biggest stage get ready to clash in front of a packed stadium. All the action here on EA TV. A warm welcome from Stamford Bridge. I'm your commentator, Guy Mowbray, joined by Sue Smith. And it's all about the Premier League here. It's Chelsea and they face Nottingham Forest. Cheers, Guy. I think it's so important that both teams start on the front foot, take the game to the opposition, and an early goal would certainly settle any nerves. Here's how Chelsea line up. Well, it looks like a 4-2-3-1 when they're in possession. May go to a 4-5-1 when defending. You think the double pivot in midfield, they're key to protect the back line, but they also need to get forward to support the press. There's going to be plenty of threat from the wide midfielders too, I'm sure. Here's how Nottingham Forest line up. Yeah, it's the same formation, and I'd expect both teams to commit players forward. So the two holding midfielders, they're going to be key from a defensive perspective. And so the first half kicks off. Pedro Neto. Nothing to split the sides, but this move is looking promising. And that brings to an end the first half at Stamford Bridge. is rolling for the second half with both sides hopefully switched on a bit more now Malo Gusto nicely sets it up have a go here they've gone in front a key moment in the match see it again he hits it so cleanly perfect contact and the keeper never really had a chance fantastic strike <laughs> so off we go at 1-0 Gusto. This could be threatening. Perfectly anticipated. Great chance here. It's in. Two to the good. That little bit of buffer. And it's just a matter of keeping concentration now. We can see it again and he does well, he shows great strength and balance to fend the defender off. 
and then he slots it home. It's a really good goal, that. So off we go. 2-0 the score now. Struggling to keep the ball there. Now there could be a chance to counter. Enzo Fernandez. Now, and this could be. And a goal to take them even further clear. Signing off in style. Well, if we watch this again, it's all about being alert in and around the box. And when the ball falls to him, he's clinical. That's a really nice finish. So 3-0 now, the lead. There is the final whistle, and it's Chelsea who take the three points. Well, that was really comfortable, wasn't it? The play going forward was so clinical. It took them apart at times and produced some top quality finishes too. It's a great result. Well, we know what a good player he is, and he's really showed it today. What's your verdict, Sue? Yeah, and a good performance, but then we wouldn't expect anything less. A solid six or seven out of ten. And he certainly played his part in the results. Building to a crescendo all week. And very shortly, it will be for real. We have all the action for you live. Hello to you from the south coast of England. The venue for this game is the Amex Stadium. My name's Derek Ray. I'm delighted to have alongside me, as usual on these occasions, Stuart Robson. And we've got Premier League action coming right up. It's Brighton and Hove Albion up against Tottenham Hotspur. Well, both teams know they need to start the game well here, try to dominate the midfield area and get their creative players on the ball. This should be an interesting game, I think. And a look at the lineup for Brighton. Well, it's certainly a back four, but I think we'll see a lot of rotation in midfield. They just need to have a good understanding about when to support the front player and when to drop that little bit deeper. It certainly looks like a 4 5 1 to me. This is the starting lineup for Tottenham Hotspur. Hyung Min Son plays with Dejan Kulusevsky out Thank wide. You, and up front on his own is Dominic Solanke. And the match begins. This could be troublesome. Straight forward for the keeper. It's looking promising. Madison. Well, strong play here. And that brings to an end the first half here at the Amex Stadium. Well, when you consider what Jung Min Son is capable of, we probably would give him low marks for his first half performance because he does set very high standards for himself. 
Well, he struggled to have any real impact on the game. I think if they are to kick on in the second half, it's key that he sees a bit more of the ball. And hopefully with that, he can start to put that back. For parity. Opportunity. And a goal! At this stage of the game, it might be decisive. And just look at their supporters. Well, here it is again, and the keeper's lost his concentration here. He's totally in the wrong position. He'll be disappointed with that. A big moment in the dying embers. Will it prove decisive here? Joao Pedro. We've had the official word. There will be a minimum of two added minutes. Oh, superb skill. And with that, the referee says that is the end of the match. And Spurs victorious. Their fans are going to be happy with this. Well, Derek, what a good finish to the game that was. They just wore down the opposition. And in the end, they got their reward. That's a really good win for them. And in the final analysis, a really positive performance from this man, Stuart. Yeah, good performance and a really critical goal to give them the lead. They just couldn't cope with his movement today.